So um, on this tutorial we're going to show you how to um, select an item from list view and then amend the record in the list um, itself. So we make a selection in the list and then we also pass it to another screen. So we're going to show you how to open another screen and pass a value to that screen. We're also going to show you how to split text using um, into, into fields using delimiters in the records as well. Um, if you, you probably need to go back and look at the previous basic search engine tutorial I, and you can find that in, um, in the lists of uh, videos that are available on the uh, channel here. Anyway, let's get back to this. In this uh, search uh, engine tutorial you'd see that I've made some records that were put in a list and those li that list was assigned to a variable called items, global items. And what I've done, is, which is different from the previous tutorials, is you'll see that I've got what's up, something called a delimiter between the fields in my records. If you look carefully, you'll see there's a colon separating the fields. Now, the reason I put that in is because in my fields, I have the aircraft type, sorry, registration, the registration, the type of aircraft and its model number. That's one field. And then I have the city or airfield it's flying from and then the date. And I wanted to separate those fields out, but because this one here has a space in it, I couldn't use the space to delimitate, delimitate those fields. I had to use the colon. You could use something else. But anyway, that's how I've organized my records. For example, here you can see Piper Warrior there. It's got a space in it. I couldn't use a colon because that would make Piper and Warrior two different fields in my database. And I don't want that. Um, so what we're going to do in this tutorial is we're going to grab one of these that the user selects and we're going to pass it to another screen and we're going to allow them to amend that record in the other screen. So this will show you a few things that you won't have seen before in my tutorials. So, okay, so that's the, uh, the first step done. You need to set this up so that it looks something like this. I've set my uh, list view picker elements to these items here. Obviously they can be from a database, it could be a tiny DB or a web DB, but basically you need to put them in a list and display them, which is what we've done here. The next thing to do is to get the list view list picker um, after picking event. So when they've picked a record that they want to update, and for the purposes of this uh, tutorial, they're just going to pick something and it's going to zoom off to the update screen. Um, right, so after they've picked something, we need to pass to a new screen um the control so uh, we're going to open another screen with a start value which uh, i don't have the screen made yet but we'll go ahead and do that but i'm going to make a screen called update update arrival and i'm going to give it the start value i'm going to give it will be what they've selected from that list after after picking so we need to go to list view there and find the list view dot selection there is there. And we're just going to pass that whole record. So one of these will get whizzed over to the new screen. So the next thing to do is to add a screen called update arrival. And that's done. Okay, and that and then we'll whiz over to update arrival. And that's it, done. There's a blank blank screen. I'll put a notifier on here just in case. I never know. I might notify something. And we'll go to the blocks and we'll um, pick that control up from the, the, the value from um, the previous screen and use it here. Okay, so I'm going to need a variable to put my uh, values in. So I'm going to have that called record. And I'm going to set that rec type to, to text because I'm just going to be getting a text record in from my um, from the previous screen but it's the one they've selected so we've done that so we now need to find out what's going to happen when we initialize our screen so on initialize I'm basically going to set this record to the value we've been uh, passed to from the previous screen so all we need to do for that is a, a set for the record and set it to in, in the control blocks here this is the control box you'll see at the very bottom there is a get start value and 
there you go we'll have the record inside there okay now what I want to do is once I've got the start value split it into its four separate fields and display them on the screen so I'm going to go ahead and uh, design this very quickly now um, I'm going to put a, uh, a table in here and I'm going to have four fields in here and they're all going to be text boxes so let's find those uh, one for the uh, registration aircraft registration I'm going to rename that here let's call it reg for now uh, another text box for the aircraft type I'll rename that as well type and another text box to the airfield it's flying it's flown in from uh, rename that from and the last one I'm just going to put a date picker because you might want to want to change the dates as well so put the date picker in there as well um, okay so with the, these will all be filled with the details from the record so let's go back to the record and Oh, I need a button to press the update, of course. So let's put that on there as well. So we'll have um, when they click this button, they submit changes. Okay, something like that. Okay, so let's go back to the blocks now and and work on these on this on these four fields here. So what we need to do is to uh, split the record at the colons, so we'll do that using the split, we'll just find that first, uh, split text out, there we go, so we're going to split text that at our colon, and that pops itself in there, so we put the colon in there, now the text we want to split is this record here, so we've got to get that, uh, so we'll get that, which is the one that's been passed to us, okay, now where are we going to put it all, well we need to store it in this split component makes you store it into a list so we need a list variable let's go create one of those store the stuff in split we want to a better name and that's going to be a list so we'll initialize that by creating an empty list of those values and then we're going to store all of these um, in there and we can do that at the start as well okay good so now that we've got all the bits of the record in there little components we now need to get them out and put them in our text boxes so I'm going to set these here like this I'll show you how I'm going to do that um, where is it? set text there it is set reg text to well there are four parts and the first part is the registration so the registration text two and I need to find out that I, I want the very first item in there so I need to look at the list and find the first item so the list we ha are looking at is split so we'll get split and the index we want is in position one so that's the very first item okay and basically you duplicate that for the other fields so we've got registration type will be in index position two the second one and from will be in index position three the last one of course is the date picker text i'd like to set that as well um where is that one there it is uh, and select this item for that's the final one that's in there so now we need to go and uh, connect to the emulator and test it see you in a second okay and here's the list back uh, let's select one let's go for this one here the third one here select that opens up screen two passes it in to the global record our four fields should appear and the record has been split into its four parts index position one two three and four okay so we could now of course we could go in and uh, change the text in in these uh, ourselves 
and so on to make an update to the record. Um, we haven't coded that yet, but we'll come to it. One other thing to be aware of at this point is that all we've done is set the date text to the date that's in the record. The actual internal date for that record, sorry, for that date clock is going to be displayed when I click it. So if someone was to submit the changes now, what would happen is it would submit today's date, which as I'm recording this is actually the 28th of October, when the original record was the 21st of January. Now I can show that, if I click on that record there, sorry that field there, you can see we've got October the 28th, that's today's date when I'm recording it. And I can set that internally to that, I haven't changed the text yet, but that, if I submit changes now, let's change it to the 28th. 28 slash 10 slash 2014 so we need to set the date to the actual date to this value here and that's what we're going to do in the next video okay I hope you got all that um, drop me a line uh, put a like on my video if you wish thank you bye